Today we're visiting Rushton Triangular Lodge here on the History Roadshow. Rushton Triangular Lodge is one of the most extraordinary buildings in England, if not the world. Built by Sir Thomas Tresham, it was planned in 1593 and built between 1594 and 1596. Thomas Tresham was an Elizabethan knight and landowner, and although fiercely loyal to the Queen as head of state, he was imprisoned for his Roman Catholic beliefs, to which this building is a testament. It's dominated by references to the number three, a symbolic of the Holy Trinity. It has three stories and three walls, each 33 feet long, armed with three windows and three gables. The exterior also features trefoils and biblical quotations, together with numbers, some of which remain mysterious in their meaning. It was originally built as a warrener's lodge where the keeper of Tresham's profitable rabbit warren at Rushton could live and pursue his business. Over the entrance door is the Latin inscription, Tres Testimonium Dont. And this phrase could mean either the number three bears witness or Tresham bears witness. However, his wife used to refer to him as just Tres. The Triangular Lodge is not only a remarkable piece of symbolism, but also skillfully designed and exquisitely crafted. The sharpness of its detailing combines to perfection its knife-edged corners and rows of pointed gables with elaborate geometry and elements that are all derived from English Gothic buildings. In incorporating so many meanings, he was creating what the Elizabethans called a device, an expression of one or more ideas in a form that cannot immediately be comprehended. As Tresham himself wrote, the harder a device is to interpret, the more commendable it is. The lodge today stands in a small tree-planted enclosure on the edge of Rushton Hall, although originally it would have been on completely open ground. In Tresham's accounts, the Triangular Lodge is referred to as the Warrener's Lodge. Tresham bred and killed rabbits for a profit, and in 1598 was selling them in London. They were valued for the meat, and the fur was used for trimming clothes. Biblical quotations, each 33 letters long, appear in the frieze above the upper story on each side of the building. The long inscriptions and the actual lettering of the inscriptions comes from another tradition. This was classic architecture of ancient Rome, which had been revived in Italy and reintroduced into England in the mid 16th century. The lodge thus affirms both novelty and tradition, but everything fits perfectly together. In contrast to the elaborate exterior, the inside of the lodge is very simple. On the lower floor is a plain hexagonal room and small triangular rooms leading off at each corner. The only ornaments are the moulded rectangular panels and small shields, one of which is carved with the Tresham arms. Two of the small triangular spaces form small closets. In the third is a stone spiral staircase serving all three floors. Down the stairs is the basement, almost identical in plan to the room above, but with a lower ceiling and less ornament. The circular and cross-shaped apertures of the ground floor windows create a striking pattern of light. Thomas Tresham was rich, capable, well-educated and a well-connected, confident man who was set to become one of the leading figures in England. He was knighted by Elizabeth I at Kenilworth Castle in 1575 and with his wife Muriel, who was daughter of Sir Robert Throckmorton, had ten children, four sons and six daughters. However, Tresham's career was a troubled one and during it the family went into decline, which ended in his bankruptcy and extinction in the 17th century. Although his personal life was tragic, we are left today with something very precious and pleasing, and who knows, maybe you can still see him wandering around his finest achievement, that being Rushton Triangular Lodge. <laughs>